Hello everyone, in this video we will be covering sections 4.5 and 4.7 We're going to skip 4.6 for now Now 4.5 is technically just a summary of everything we've done in chapter 4 So you're going to need everything we've done so far The first derivative test, second derivative test, critical points, increasing, decreasing And even stuff from, from algebra we're going to use all that information to create some, some graphs. The book has a specific uh, format to do it. I'm going to do the first problem like that, but it's not required that you do it exactly in that format as long as you get all the information needed. Okay, so the first thing you need to find is the, the domain. And since this is a polynomial, the domain is all the real numbers, so there is no issue there because you're not dividing by anything and you're not taking the square root of anything, neg any negative numbers. The next thing you need to find, which is just algebra also, is the y-intercept. Remember, y-intercept means x equals to 0, so if this is 0 and this is 0, the only thing left is a. So the y-intercept is 0, a. Remember, that's where it crosses the y-axis. Then you have to check if the function is even or odd. And if you forget this from pre-calculus, an even function is something that obviously has an exponent that is even, something like this. So this will be an even function. And if you have something that looks like this, which is x cubed, this will be considered an odd function. Now, how can you tell if a function is even? Well, if f of minus x is equals to f of x, then the function will be even. And if f of minus x is equals to minus f of x, then the function will be will be odd. Notice that this one is symmetrical on the y-axis, which means if you rotate this around the y-axis, you end up with the same same side. That's not the case for add, but it's for even. Now, if it is add, this area right here is going to be the same area as right here. And we're going to talk about that in chapter 5. Well, if it is even, this area is exactly the same thing as this area. But notice that this area and this area is the same. So you just add it up because it's positive. Well, here the area will be negative, this will be positive, so they will cancel each other and will give you zero all the time. But we'll talk about this later in chapter 5. For now, it's going to check if the function is even or not. And that's going to make graphing easier. So, part C. So, f of minus x is going to be minus x to the 4 minus a times minus x squared plus a and notice that you end up with exactly the same function you start with so that means that the function is even so the graph has to look something like this then part d you check for asymptotes but again since this is not a rational expression or a rational function there is none you only have Vertical asymptotes that you can divide by zero and horizontal asymptotes is the end behavior as x goes to infinity or minus infinity, which is not infinity. All right? So now part E we need to find um what is increasing, decreasing. So first the critical point. So for that we need the derivative f prime is gonna be four x q minus sixteen x. To find the critical points, remember we need uh, f prime equals to zero, which will imply if you factor for x, this will be x squared minus four equals to zero, which is for x times x minus two, x plus two. So therefore the critical points will be x equals to zero, x equals to two, and x equals to negative two. Then let's check what happens uh, around the critical points. So you have the critical points 0, 2, and negative 2. 
remember that at this point the slope is zero which means the line could go like this okay so at this point the slope is zero so that's why the the line is flat this is the number two so then um all you have to do is check some values here 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 and here so let's say we check uh here number one you plug in one here this is positive negative and positive so this will be positive times negative times positive so the whole thing will be negative here let's say we pick phi it will be positive 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 so the whole thing will be positive and then uh, here let's say we pick minus one so this will be negative negative positive so the whole thing is positive and here let's say we pick minus six it will be negative 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 so the whole thing is negative now remember here negative means uh, the derivative is negative which means the slope is decreasing so therefore one possible way to have the graph will be this is this has to be decreasing to get up to here this point is zero from here to here it increases so it could increase up to here and then it decreases again since this is negative at this point is zero then increases again so the graph has to look some something like this so once we finish the graph it should be more precise but it has to look something very similar to this now by the first derivative test you can see from here that this will be a minimum a maximum and a minimum so you have a minimum at x equals to negative 2 and x equals to 2 and you have a maximum at x equals to, to 0 you can see that from here okay then the next thing is to find the uh, concavity so this will be g then notice here f double prime is going to be 12x squared minus 16 so you want to find the inflation point that's where the second derivative is equals to zero so that means 12 x squared equals to 16 or x squared is equals to 4 over 3 or x is equals to plus or minus 2 over radical 3 okay so then we do another, another graph you have 0 2 over radical 3 minus 2 over radical 3 then we do the same thing with it here so we check where this is positive where this is negative so let's say we pick zero so we pick zero you can see that this will be negative so from here to here it will be concave um okay down and if we pick anything here it will be positive so this will be concave up okay now notice that this value is around 1.15 so just for reference so again concave up remember looks like this well concave down looks like that okay so now with this it should be enough enough information to the graph well one last thing remember that the the inflation points are going to happen when x is equals to 2 over radical 3 and x equals minus 2 over radical 3 which will be minus 1.15 and 1.15 so now we can fix the graph now so notice that if this is 2 and this is 1 1.15 is somewhere here so this will be the inflation point here and here and at that point is where it's going to change its concavity so before that is concave up so therefore the graph could look something like this notice that the y-intercept was equals to 
0a so the graph is not completely to scale but technically at this point this will be the number 8 goes down these are the inflation points and this goes up okay let's just check that the concavity is is fine notice that between minus 1.5 and 1.5 is supposed to be concave down which it is once it gets to 1.5 it goes up it's concave up and here is also concave up so this is how the graph is going to look and that's it for this problem all right well you didn't get that one this is the chance to redeem your scenes this one is actually more tricky because it's not a polynomial but let's follow the same pattern so first what is the the domain well, for the domain, x cannot be 2 and x cannot be negative 2 because you are dividing by, by 0. For the y-intercept, y-intercept is when x is equal to, to 0. So therefore, this will be the point 0, negative 1, 4. So that will be the y-intercept. Next, is this even? Well, how much is f of minus x? Notice that this will give you minus x squared minus 4, which is equals to 1 over x squared minus 4. And again, it's equals to f of x, which implies that this is even again. Now, part D, the asymptotes. Well, you have two vertical asymptotes, x equals to 2 and x equals to minus 2. So whatever is not part of the domain are the vertical asymptotes for this particular problem. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. Because if you take the limit, so x goes to infinity with this, the whole thing is 0. So these are the asymptotes. Part E, we need to find the, the derivative and find what is increasing, decreasing. Now, notice the f prime, or that, sorry, notice that f is equals to this. But you can rewrite this this way. So in that case, you can use the chain rule instead of the caution rule to take the derivative. So therefore, f prime is going to be minus x squared minus 4 to the negative 2 times 2x, which is minus 2 over x over x squared minus 4 squared. If you use the caution rule, you should get exactly the same thing. Okay, so now notice that f prime is equals to zero if x is equals to, to zero. So therefore, a critical point is going to happen when x is equals to, to zero. Now, f prime does not exist when x is equals to two or negative two, but uh, x equals to 2 and negative 2 are not part of the domain. So therefore, the only critical point is this one, x equals to 0. All right, so now let's see what happens uh, when you get close to 0 on the left side and the right side. So we already know x is 0, this is flat like this. And also remember that at x equals to 2 and negative 2, you have asymptotes, which you cannot cross. So if x is, let's say we pick um, 1, notice that the derivative is going to be um, negative at the top. The value is going to be positive all the time because you are squaring. So this is going to be negative, which means that is decreasing in here. If we pick, let's say now negative one, then this will be positive. The value is always positive, so the whole thing is positive, which means it's increasing here. So it's increasing zero, decreasing. And then uh, let's pick, let's say, 4. This will be negative. 
it will be positive so the whole thing will be negative which means it's decreasing and you should check that on this side the whole thing is increasing okay? like this right so then for part e the only uh since you only have one critical 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 point here and this is technically increasing it gets to zero and then it decreases then um that will be the maximum in this particular case actually since the y intercept is negative one four the graph most likely will look like this it increases to one four then it becomes zero there and then it decreases remember you cannot cross the asymptote so it has to look like that okay so therefore the only uh maximum you have happens at x equals to, to zero okay now the second second derivative and um for the second derivative okay this is actually f and then g f double prime it takes a while to get you have to use the quotient rule this time you have no choice and you should check that the second derivative is exactly equals to the 6x squared plus a divided by x squared minus 4q okay so notice that f double prime is never going to be zero okay for this particular case so that implies no inflation points but that doesn't mean it is not concave up or concave down actually if you uh you check the points we have here so far remember you have zero then you have the asymptotes at two negative two notice that if you pick any point in here let's say zero and you plug it in here this will be positive and this will be negative so it will be positive the right one is negative the whole thing is negative so that means this is concave down so it has to look like this which is the case already you can see here then let's say we pick here four then this will be positive this will be also positive the whole thing will be positive so this will be concave up which means this and you can check that this is also concave up so therefore that's how the graph is going to look so once we simplify the graph will look like this concave down this is the maximum and then this will be concave up this will be concave up and this is approaching zero because that's the horizontal asymptote so the graph will look something like that and that's it for section 4.5 now here the part that takes the longest is the second derivative especially the function is not, it's not nice so you just have to be careful but it's not hard it just takes a little while to to get to the point to the points all right let's go now to section 4.7 4.7 is called optimization you actually did this already in algebra and pre-calculus optimization just means to find what's the maximum or minimum which we've been doing already in this chapter so now it's going to be very very specific uh, word problems but remember in in algebra so you did this in algebra they ask you to find the the maximum and this was the the vertex so all you do was find the vertex and that was it in pre-calculus and in physics you have a famous problem where you have a missile that is thrown up then it gets to a maximum altitude and then it goes down so the question is what is the maximum altitude and as you can see this is where the derivative is equal to, to zero and it will be a maximum if it goes from positive so if the slope changes from positive 
to negative, which is the first derivative test. You can also use the second derivative test, and we'll get to that right now. So usually the problems, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have to maximize or minimize uh, something that is going to call the main function. And you usually need to get this from a uh, original problem. And then the main function, you either want to find the maximum or you want to find the minimum, depending on the context of the problem. But then there is a second function, which I call the constraint equation. And without the constraint equation, you cannot find the, the maximum. So therefore, this is this is very important because without the constraint, it's not possible to find this or this. And then, like I just mentioned, you're going to use either the first or second derivative test. So here the hard part is to get the problem. To find the derivatives will be pretty, pretty easy, like you will see in a second. But before we do that, let me go and explain a very basic problem from algebra and how the derivative is needed and why it's useful or faster than to than to to do algebra okay so let's have the following illustration let's say that pedro has a a hundred um, feet of fence and obviously he wants to make a let's say he wants to make a fence to put boxes inside and let's say that each box is equals to one feet square okay and let's say that he decides to do this first he decides to put a, a let's say 40 here so therefore it has to be 40, it has to be 10, it has to be 10. So if he decides to do this, that means the area is 400 feet square, which means he, he can put 400 of these boxes in here. Okay? But if instead he would have decide, decided to do this, let's say he decides to put 30 here, 30, 20, and 20, now this one is 600 feet square. So just by making a small change, therefore, uh, he has increased the area a lot. So the question is going to be, well, is there a specific shape that will give you the maximum area or a specific measurements? So this is where, where we go back to this. The main function, the one is the, is the area. So the main function... The one you want to maximize or minimize, in this case you want to maximize, is the area. Okay? And the constraint is going to be that you have <clears throat> only a hundred feet of fence. So you have to work with that. So then what we do is we do this in general. And remember you have a rectangle. If this is x will be y the area will be equals to x times y right so therefore this will be x y now this is where the constraint becomes very important without the constraint you cannot solve the problem so therefore 2x plus 2y which is the perimeter has to equals to 100 or from here that means that x plus y has to be 50 or the y is equals to 50 minus x, okay? It actually doesn't matter which one you solve for. So therefore the area, you can write it now as a function of x only, and it will be x times 50 minus x, which will be 50x minus x squared. So then we take the derivative to find the critical points. A prime is 50 minus 2x, so a prime equals to zero implies that two x has to be 50 or that x is equals to 25. Now, 
you can use the first or the second derivative test. I told you to, to check that this is a, a maximum. Let's do both of them. Let's say you have 25 here. So at this point, remember this is equals to, to zero. So it's flat, the slope is flat. And we're talking about the, the derivative right here. So let's say you pick 30 here. So you pick 30. Notice that this will be minus 60. So the whole thing will be negative. And then you pick, let's say, zero. This will be positive. So notice that this goes changes from positive to negative. So clearly this is a, a max. Or you use the second derivative test. The second derivative is equals to minus two, which is negative. So that implies this is a, a maximum. Okay. So therefore, what should be the maximum dimensions? Well, it will be a square, which will be 25 25 25 and the maximum area will be 625 that's it again this is a very simplistic problem but this illustrates the whole point you have a main function they want to minimize or maximize and then you have the constraint which it has to be related to the main function somehow and you need to solve for one of the variables here usually plug it into the other one so you only have one variable Take the derivative, set it equals to zero, and then use the first derivative or second derivative test to show that it's a maximum or a minimum. So in the next few pages, we're just going to be doing different examples, but this is the main idea. Okay, let's try this problem now. It says, a rancher has 400 feet of fence for constructing a rectangular corral. So this is very similar to the previous one. That is a little more tricky. One side of the corral will be formed by a barn that requires no fencing so therefore you have a, a farm here so this part requires no fence because it really has a fence there and then it says you had to have three exterior fences and two interior ones so it has to look like this one two three and then this one so you will have three three regions okay so you have uh, uh, three exterior ones one two three and two interior ones now the question is what should the dimensions be to me to maximize the enclosed area okay now uh, for lack of a better name again let's call this one x so this has to be x this has to be x this has to be x so therefore this is this is y now the area is still going to be x times y so i'm going to change but from the constraint the constraint says that 4x plus y has to be equal to 400 or the y is equal to 400 minus 4x you see this is the constraint so we're going to do the same thing we did in the previous one. So the area in terms of x, you can also do this in terms of y. But it just somehow it's easier to do in terms of x. So then this is equals to 400x minus 4x squared. All right, so next you need to find the critical points. And set it equals to, um, by setting the derivative equals to zero. So here a prime is equals to 400 minus a x. So a prime equals to zero implies that a x equals to 400, or that x is equals to to 50. Now if we take the second derivative again. The second derivative is equals to minus a, which is negative. So that implies that this will give you a maximum. So therefore, the dimensions will be the following. Uh, we're going to measure a 50 feet by uh, 80, sorry, by 200. How do we get 200? Well, we just plug it in here. 5 times 4 is 200, 400 minus 200 gives you 200. So this will be the, 
the dimensions of the fence. All right, let's try the next one. So suppose an airline policy states that all baggage must be box shape, so box shape, with a sum of length, width, and height not exceeding 64 inches. What are the dimensions and volume of a square box with the greater volume under this, these conditions? Okay. So now, remember that if you have a cube, which is technically what a box is, so it looks like this. Okay. But this is the length, the width, and the height. So the main function here is the volume, which is LW times H. So this will be the, the main function. Okay, so this is the main function. Now the constraint is that the length plus the width plus the height has to be 64 or less than 64 and this is the constraint okay but since uh this has to be box box shape and you want it to be a square box that means the length and the width will be the the same so this implies that 2w plus h is equal to 64 or you can have 2L, it doesn't matter. So from here, H would be equals to 64 minus 2W. So then we need the volume in terms of a single variable. So if the length, so remember, the length is equals to the width, that's what it means to be square. So this will be W squared times H, but H is 64 minus 2W. Two, two so therefore, this will be 64w squared minus 2wq. Then we do the exact same thing. bq is going to be equals to 128w minus 6w squared. We want the derivative to be 0 to find the critical points. So therefore, this implies that 128w uh, should be equals to uh, 6w squared or you can also just factor from here one of the solutions is w equals to 0 but I mean you cannot have a width of 0 because otherwise there is no luggage but this is I guess the most formal way to do it so from here w is equals to 0 or w is equals to 64 over 3 from this one, which means that the length, remember, is 64 over over 3. Now, therefore, if you want to find the, the height, the height is going to be 64 minus 2w, which is uh, 64 over 3. And once you simplify the whole thing, you should check that this is also 65 over 3. Which, if you think about it, if the three dimensions are the same, this implies this is a Q. Now, to verify that this is actually a maximum, remember, uh, you can just use the second derivative test. So from here, the second derivative is equals to 128 minus 12W. But remember that the, the critical point was uh, W equals to... 64 over 3. If you plug it in here, you can see that this is going to be negative, which implies that's a, a max. So you always need to, to verify using either the first derivative or the second derivative test. Okay. Okay, so now let's try a slightly different problem but it's the, the same idea it says find the point to the curve which is the square root of x remember the square root of x looks like this as the graph closest to the point three zero so let's say three zero is here okay so you want to find um the point which for lack of a better name is called x and y 
which will be the closest one. Remember that this is the same thing as x, the square root of x. Okay, so notice that the distance formula is the square root of x minus 3 squared plus the square root of square root of x minus 0 squared. That's the distance formula. Now, it doesn't matter if you minimize d or d squared. And the only reason why we're doing this is so that we don't have to deal with the chain rule. Okay? So therefore, the derivative with respect to x of this, this will give you 2, x minus 3 plus 1. And you want this to be 0. Okay, so this will be 2x minus 6 plus 1. You want it to be 0, that's to find the to find the critical points, remember, which is technically the main thing we're doing. So from here, that means that 2x equals to 5, or that x is equals to 5 over 2. So this will be the critical point. Now, uh, the second derivative... is equals to just 2x. I mean, the second derivative is 2, because the derivative of this is 2, this is 0 and 0, which is positive. So remember that implies this is a minimum. So this guarantees that if you pick x equals to, to 1 half, then that will have the minimum distance. So this should be 5 over 2 and the square root of 5 over 2. So this will be the closest or the minimum distance. And that's it. All right, the next one, this is pretty much, it starts getting a little more tricky because of the geometry, but the idea is the same. It says a right circular cylinder. Okay, so you have a cylinder which you can just think it's a can, like this, okay? So this is inscribed, which means it's inside a uh, um, cone, like this. Okay, that's not the best uh, this picture. Let me try to do something better. Okay, so this is the cone, where well, this is the, the radius of the cone, and this is the height, okay. and then x is going to be the radius of the cylinder. Right, then we're going to call the distance between here and here y. So notice the, the height of the cylinder. So this is actually going to be h minus y. So this is going to be very, very important. Since we need it for the, for the volume of the cylinder. So actually the volume of the cylinder is going to be pi r squared. Or in this case, sorry, x squared, which is the radius, times the high. But the high for this one is h minus y. Now the volume for the cone is one third pi r square h. Now we need to find a connection between the variables, otherwise you're not gonna be able to take the derivative of a single single variable. So this is where we're gonna use similar triangles. So notice that the radius for the cylinder is x. So here we form this triangle. And here you have this triangle. So that means that y over x is a proportional to h over r. And therefore from here y is equals to hx over r. So now if we come to the function we want to maximize, so the volume will be pi x squared h minus y, but then uh, y is equals to hx 
over r. Now notice, and this is very important, that this is a function of x only since r and h are constants because the size of the uh, of the cone is set so they are constant they don't they don't change okay so we span this is not necessary but it will make it easier to take the, the derivative so this will be pi h x q over r so therefore the derivative with respect to x is going to be 2 pi h uh, minus 3 pi h x squared over r it's missing the x here okay notice that you can factor the pi h and the x so this will be 2 minus 3x over r so therefore if you want the derivative to be 0 that means that x will be equals to 2 over 3r remember r is the radius of the, the cone and this is a critical critical point so therefore y is going to be equals to remember h x over r but x is equals to 2 over 3 r so this gives you just 2 h over over 3 and remember the height of the cylinder was h minus y so you simplify this this will give you h over 3 now we will take the second derivative the second derivative is equal to 2 pi h minus 6 pi h over r x and if you do the second derivative uh, at the critical point which is uh, 2 over 3 r if you check that this gives you 0 which implies this is a uh, some maximum maximum so therefore the dimensions or the maximum uh, cylinder that can be fitted into a cone is going to be the following the radius is going to be equals to 2 over 3r which means it's two thirds of the radius of the cone and the the high so, so then the the high so maybe I should write it like this so the the radius with this and the high will be uh, the high divided by 3 so this will be the dimensions or the maximum cylinder that can be fitted into a cone. And, and that's it.